Hi there, and welcome to this video about rowing technique. My name is Robin Williams, I'm an international rowing coach and a coaching consultant. And this is the first video of a small series I've made. They're not very long, around about 10 minutes or so. And each one tackles a particular theme about, uh, about rowing technique, an aspect of the rowing stroke. It also looks at some of the problems that people encounter, some of the technical things that go wrong, some of the technical faults that people have. And thirdly, it tries to come up with some solutions, some ideas to help correct those faults, and uh, some, some drills and ideas that you can do on the ergo, and indeed in, in the boat when you get the chance. So I hope you enjoy them. Let's make a start. Okay, so in this first video, I'm going to be looking at the back end of the stroke, the finish, and in particular, the acceleration and the momentum that we create to the finish, which is something we definitely want to do in a rowing boat, because of course, the more we accelerate, in theory, the faster we go, but it also brings with it certain problems, which is, in particular, what happens when I get to the finish, and how do I recover myself for the next stroke? I'll explain because there are a lot of problems that arise in this area of the stroke. Uh, I'm going to use feet out as a way of demonstrating this. Doing some feet out rowing might seem a slightly strange exercise to begin with because a lot of people find it quite difficult and most people actually don't like it very much. I myself, back in the day many many years ago, remember stroking an eight. The coach said row feet out, which we did for a bit, and at the back of one stroke I literally lost the footboard and landed in the lap of the, of the seven man behind me and uh, whilst funny at the time actually um, I didn't get the exercise, didn't understand the objectives and really didn't, didn't like doing it. Okay so here I am feet out as you can see and uh, if I row legs only feet out and I take a good push on the, on the machine let's see what happens at the end of the stroke. can see straight away that I come away from the footboard. I'll do that again. And of course, without the foot straps to hold me there, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to keep on going. So the footboard or the, the leg drive will accelerate me away from, uh, from the stretcher. If I do the same exercise now, but with body only, so the legs stay flat, no arms, just body, you can see that it has the same tendency. It puts me off balance, so I tend to come away from the shoes. <clears throat> I should also say at this stage of the video that if you're trying this at home, please be careful because I don't want anybody hurting themselves. Uh, you must do this uh, carefully and with due care and make sure you don't fall or, or hurt yourself. So we can see with legs only or body only, when the feet are out, we get to the finish of the stroke, we come away from the, from the stretcher, effectively off balance. It's a kind of a good thing because the whole point is to accelerate, so it's rather like doing a squat jump from the floor, eventually we want to leave the floor and make a really high jump. Here we want to accelerate the boat in a really good way that way. But going off balance at the end of it is, is a problem. But let's see what happens when we do arms only. So this time I'm going to leave my legs down flat, leave my body position alone and just pull the arms and see what happens down here in the feet. So you can see with arms only, I don't come away from the footboard. Now, there are a couple of reasons for that. One is because I'm, the rest of me isn't moving, so it's actually, I'm in a more stable position to start with, of course. But actually, out of the legs, the trunk, and the arms, out of those three segments, the arms help pull me back against the stretcher at the end of the stroke. If I do it again, we can see and we can hear that the, the wheel of the ergo is, is turning, so I'm making force but it's also helping hold me against my feet. And in the rowing stroke, as long as we have pressure, two types of pressure, one against the footboard that way, and one in the handle going this way, as long as we have two pressures, 
my body, my effort will stay balanced between the two points. If I lose one or the other, effectively I've lost the stroke and I've lost balance. So out of the three segments, legs, trunk and arms, two of them are very powerful and uh, will help produce a lot of acceleration. The third one is the final part of that acceleration but also part of the solution. So if I row a few strokes of uh, uh, whole full length uh, feet out now, we'll see. And I'll just do it quite steadily. So we can see as long as at the end of the stroke I've got some arms left and some speed coming in on the handle, I can avoid uh, coming off the stretcher. Now, the typical problems that we see in rowing uh, in the boat and on the ergo is that people sort of cheat their way out of this problem at the finish. The first one they do is they, they strap hang. They strap themselves in and they use the straps or the shoes to halt this momentum. You can do that, but it's a little bit of a fake solution because it means you've got tension here in the quads. You're not really doing it in a balanced way. I prefer the idea if we can sequence properly through legs, trunk and arms, actually my ability to recover is based off my own pressure not based off being stranded and somehow recovering myself other problems we get is people get to this point they very often pull back over the handle obviously that keeps the weight this side of the seat rather than behind the seat so pulling back over the handle is very common in the boat and on the ergo another one is to just get get to the end here and slump because that also kills the momentum in that direction. The trouble is you lose all posture, your knees unhook here, you're really off balance in a different way. Other things people do is they drop, they drop their wrists and elbows and the oar which should leave the water cleanly, square, clean with some shape, quite often they pancake it like that. So you come out pancake on the water and lift away again. Uh, another problem is that people sometimes lean away. Uh, there are all sorts of ways that people find to get around the problem, but in so doing they're creating another problem. And, and that problem is you've lost the thread of continuity with the travel of the boat and, uh, and effectively lost some of your rhythm. It means you've got to stop, organize and restart, which isn't great, especially when you're trying to row fluidly up at, up at rate and row, rowing fast. Okay, so what about solutions for this? Well, feet out, as I said, is really part of the solution. If you can row feet out, I had to learn it myself and figure it out, that, that's one of the best exercises you can do. An easy way to start, of course, would be with a back end builder. As I've explained, arms only, it's not too difficult. When we add the body in here, the body the trunk is really making the first pull and the arms the second pull. So the body movement, the body swing here, is actually helping create some power for this movement here. Uh, so it's not too difficult to stay connected to the stretcher with arms and body. One of the things I see a lot as a rowing coach is this people grab it on the arms first and then on the body instead of body, body, body and arms. Then of course we can unhook the knees and go to quarter slide. At this stage it's still quite easy there to produce handle speed and handle speed is what I need to stop myself leaving the feet. The further forwards or the longer I row, the more it becomes a problem because I'm storing up a lot more energy, storing up a lot more momentum there. But as long as you've got enough handle speed here, you can row really quite firm and quite hard. Ultimately, of course, shoes, the straps help. Uh, but it's important to do this kind of drill 
this kind of rowing in an honest way and not, not cheat. Uh, and just to close, another drill obviously is to do, do a build up from the front end, from legs only. And again, at this stage here, you can see, I just come away from the stretcher a little bit at the end, but it's not too much of a problem because we're not moving that quickly at the front of the stroke. There's not that much momentum. We're not opening early. We're just pushing down low. So there's a, a hopefully uh, some useful ideas. As I said, I think feet out is a great exercise, but you have to figure it out. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of very accomplished rowers, um, many of them world and even Olympic medalists, who uh, loathe it and actually can't do it. But it's a great one. Do it honestly, have fun with it, experiment, and uh, I hope that helps. See you next time.